Here we are at Formex in Germany with Dines Design. What's your name, sir? Max. Max, it's really nice to meet you. Thank Tell you. me everything that's new about Dines Design. So basically, uh, depending on when you saw us uh, last time, uh, we have a lot of new product, uh, industrial product, and also some more consumer grade product here. The orchids that will monitor like your filament, and also the horizon for bed leveling. So basically the horizon, how it's going to work, uh, instead of using uh, like mechanical switch or sensor, it's using a strain gauge. Right. So basically like the force you're going to push on your nozzle will be detected by the horizon. So the cool thing about that is that if you're using a glass, using metal, plastic or anything, it's going to work on anything. Brilliant. And also if you're changing your nozzle and there's a small difference in height, I mean, it's working with pressure. So as soon as you touch your bed, it's going to be exactly where you want. And for the horses, uh, we also had a few years ago the Sentinel that was monitoring the presence of the filament. But this one will uh, monitor the movement. So you can check for jam, for under extrusion, over extrusion. All right, OK. So this is the two main products that we launch uh, early next year. Uh, and other than that, we have the industrial product like the Typhoon. Typhoon is a filament-based extruder. It's working with 2.85 millimeter filament, uh, and it can extrude up to one kilo an hour. Uh, it's working with a quad pin system, so there's four wheel pushing on the filament. We always have our easy removal filament, so you just have a latch to move, and you can remove your filament, put another one back in, and go up. Also, we have an easy swappable head, so you just have to unscrew your head, remove the, the heating zone, and put one back together, and you're ready to go. Um, the industrial products are all liquid cooled, so no fan, everything. They are rating up to 500 degrees Celsius, so you can go with any type of polymer, and also with flexible filament. And the last, the, one of our biggest products is the Pulsar that work with pellets instead of filament. Uh, it can go up to a 2.5 kilo per hour. Again, it's liquid cooled. Uh, they're working with pellets, so it's really interesting for big prints. Uh, normally, we will think about like $30 a kilo for a spool of filament, but in pellets, maybe it's going to be $5 a kilo. So for people that making really big print, it's really a cost-effective way to print. So what do, what do you print? What, what do you normally print yourself? Uh, basically in the company, uh, it's strange because uh, we print a lot of dummy parts like pucks because we really like to, in the company, we characterize the product. So s normally we can like print and print, check, check the flow, check the quality and everything. But something we print really uh, recently is a, a complete drum set. Wow. So bass drum, tom and everything was 3D printed with the Pulsar. Uh, and also we printed uh, insole, uh, we print a lot of stuff. But normally I would say most of the things we print is just to characterize our product and make sure they work well. So we're not going to see a Dines Design rock band then? Uh, rock band, what do you mean? Rock, rock band music? Uh, no, I mean, it's funny that you say that because a lot of people that work in Dice Design is a musician. Oh, really? The, yeah, why we print a drum is because Phil, the guy you know, uh, is a drummer. And the first time when we create Dice Design, uh, Phil, uh, Phil and I have one of the co founder and the first thing Phil wanted to do with his 3D printer was to print drum. Amazing. Yeah, and right now we are able to print a drum set completely from scratch and really fast. That's brilliant. Well, you've definitely got some exciting products, and it's good to see you at these shows as well. Obviously, I caught you guys up the NEC a couple of months back and uh, met up with the guys then. Um, thank you so much for your time today. We are with Philippe again. How are you, sir? Really good. What about you? I'm absolutely amazing. Now, we've just been told about your drum set. <laughs> that you 3D printed. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so actually I've made a couple of drum sets. The first one is the one we use with dies. So we bought a standard acoustic drum for the hardware. I took all the measurements for the whole pattern and everything, and I made a 3D model with uh, some kind of swirl pattern just to give it a nice look. And we printed it using the Pulsar and then drilled the holes, put the hardware on it, and it's the kit we use for trade show. But I really enjoyed it. I was surprised by the sound. And I realized that since uh, drums exist in acrylic, why not do it in different polymers? I, it, it, like, I, I think the drum heads do a lot of difference on the sounds, but the shells material a bit less. They do, but they still sound good. 
So I, 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 when I was 17, I made uh, my whole drum set. I, I bought like maple shells, do the painting, did everything. And I tried to sell it, but nobody wanted to buy it. So at some point I said, hey, why wouldn't I do the same? So I took all the measurement again and did my whole personal drum set with 3D printing. Amazing. Yeah, and then I said, okay, the, the costly thing about this drum set is the hardware, so the tension rod, the rims. So I bought some, you know, when we were in school, uh, when they were a light, uh, sh like using um, the... Um, overhead, I, overhead projector? Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. So the, the plastic use is called Millar. It's a biaxial oriented uh, PET, right. bow, bow pet, so it's kind of a stretch uh, PET, and they use the same thing for drum heads. So I, I did a 3D model of a, um, a drum shell that was not using a single part from a standard drum, ju just to bring the cost down for people to toy with. So using that kind of plastic, I, I was able to um, clamp it using two uh, hoops and then standard screws and then without having to buy anything from a real drum you actually can wow. get a, a real drum that's amazing so are we going to be so what's your next trade show where are you going next uh, the next one I think it will be in in uh, France in, in France in okay. Lyon. yeah right yeah. so can we see a drum kit at the next show uh, sadly d due to the shipping costs and everything <laughs> you know it's we're a bit on uh, on a budget so mostly when we go in the US, for example, Detroit, we will be bringing the drum there. Wow. And on this side, I'm trying to build a community and share those files so that people can build their own without having to design it. So uh, maybe I could send you a link. Uh, yeah, please do. Yeah, please yeah. do. That's amazing. Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome.